Hello, I'm Dr. Joji Suzuki. I'm the director for the Division of Addiction Psychiatry in the Department of Psychiatry at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And these are Mass General Brigham's answers to the most commonly asked questions about opioid addiction. So what are opioids? Well, opioids are compounds that activate the opioid receptors in the brain. And they come in three basic varieties. The first is naturally occurring opioids. Um, opioids actually occur in our brains. Uh, they're called endorphins and they actually function uh, naturally inside. And they're also opioids that we find in, in the wild. Uh, the most uh, you know, famous example is opium um, taken from poppy plants and you get morphine out of it. So naturally occurring opioids include endorphins and morphine. The second class is semi-synthetic opioids. These are compounds that are derived from morphine and we tweak it in the lab to create something new. Heroin is a good example, oxycodone, hydromorphone, hydrocodone. They're all examples of semi-synthetic opioids. And then finally, the third class is completely synthetic opioids. These are completely man-made, created in laboratory. They have no uh, equivalent uh, naturally occurring versions. So these include things like methadone, fentanyl, or meparity. So what is fentanyl and how is it different from the other opioids? So fentanyl is a chemical that's used in medicine for surgical treatment, also for uh, chronic pain treatment, especially when it comes to severe pain like cancer. Fentanyl that you see on the illicit market today is completely produced in the laboratory. It is not diverted pharmaceutical fentanyl. We believe it's about 50 to 100 times more potent than heroin, and that's why it's, it's had a devastating consequence on the opioid crisis today. What is opioid addiction? Opioid addiction is characterized by a chronic relapsing brain disorder which is also a biopsychosocial disease. And we look for three distinct features um, to diagnose opioid addiction. The first is that the person is unable to control the behavior. There tends to be a compulsive use of the particular substance, in this case, opioids. And this is accompanied by very strong cravings to use the opioid. And then finally, this is all occurring in a context of accumulating negative consequences. Is addiction a disease or a choice? I get asked this question quite a bit, actually. And it's both. So ironically, early on in the experimentation of these drugs, the person is able to stop, probably. But there aren't a lot of negative consequences to want to stop. But as the use progresses and the negative consequences accumulate, it actually is much harder to stop. And that's the paradox of addiction, is that early on, the person probably could have stopped if they wanted to. But there was no need to or no perceived need to because there, weren't, there wasn't uh, as much harm uh, associated with it. But as our harms accumulate, it becomes harder and harder to stop. What are the warning signs of opioid addiction? Well, the first thing to note is that historically, the trajectory for opioid addiction started with taking prescription opioids for legitimate medical reasons. So for example, taking a Percocet after uh, an injury uh, or a surgical procedure or a dental procedure. Um, and unfortunately for some people that can continue and escalate. Uh, and then eventually, typically, that can lead to taking something like heroin or fentanyl. So some of the warning signs we look for include things like taking more than prescribed, losing the prescription, or asking for an early refill, meaning that the person ran out of the medications earlier than it was intended, going to different doctors or emergency rooms to try to get those medications, forging prescriptions. So all these things are things that are very concerning and suggest that things are getting out of control. Other warning signs to look for are things like changes in mood that happen rapidly, changes in academic or work performance, um, appearing sedated or what we call nodding off with pinpoint pupils. This is a very classic uh, sort of presentation of somebody who's intoxicated on opioids. How can you use opioid pain medications safely? Well, if you're prescribed these medications after surgery, a dental procedure, you should listen to your doctor's recommendations. And if they feel that it's indicated, uh, then you should actually feel safe in doing so. But it's very important to work closely with your doctors to make sure that you're taking them as prescribed and only in that context. An important thing to remember is that you should never give away medications that are unused. The diversion of unused medications uh, was one of the biggest reasons for the opioid crisis today. So how is opioid addiction diagnosed? We diagnose basically by talking to patients to obtain information about how they're using opioids. The things that we look for are the three C's, loss of control, cravings, and accumulating negative consequences. And 
Basically, what that means is the person is using more opioids than intended. They're not able to stop even if they tried. They're spending a lot of time using, obtaining, and recovering from the substance, and then using despite knowing that it's actually harmful. And for cravings, it's, it's these subjective urges that are so powerful that it drives a person to want to keep using. Uh, when it comes to accumulating ne negative consequences, we look for uh, failed role obligations, whether that's in school, family, or employment, um, social conflict with your loved ones or friends. How is opiate addiction treated? Opiate addiction treatment is like a three-legged stool. The three legs are treating the biology using medications, treating the psychology by counseling, and then finally the social aspect, which is creating a recovery-oriented environment. Are medication treatments for opioid addiction simply replacing one addiction for the other? I think that's a great question. The two most commonly used medications today to treat opioid addiction are buprenorphine and methadone. Buprenorphine is uh, more well known uh, by its brand name, Suboxone. These two medications are opioids, no different in, in terms of how they affect the brain compared to morphine or oxycodone. It's just that they have different chemical properties that make them much, much safer to use for treatment purposes. One thing it does is it actually satisfies the cravings that people have for opioids. The second is that it actually blocks people from experiencing other opioids. So if somebody's taking buprenorphine or methadone at sufficient doses, taking heroin or fentanyl on top actually prevents them from feeling any effects from it. We begin to see that there's a big difference between somebody taking illicit heroin or fentanyl versus somebody taking a legally prescribed uh, buprenorphine or methadone. First, when somebody's taking heroin, for example, they're not able to control it. They lose control. They also have strong cravings to use heroin. And then finally, life is unraveling. There are lots of negative consequences accumulating. But when somebody starts taking buprenorphine or methadone under medical supervision, the patient is able to control it, cravings go down, and their lives get better. So where can I go to seek help for opioid addiction? I think the best place to go is to seek advice from your doctor. Your doctor should be able to help you understand where to get the help you need, and also whether medications are appropriate for you. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Dr. Joji Suzuki. At Mass General Program, we are here for you.